tired of hearing the same old basic mindset and motivational fluff talk, you've come to the right show. Welcome to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast where we dish on everything from managing that crazy brain of yours to manifesting abundance to my straightforward, actionable steps that will make you major money online. Now, I'm not your typical multimillionaire entrepreneur. It takes a small village to keep my anxiety and depression in check. I'm inherently disorganized with an intense obsession with office supplies. Your girl here is a digital marketing content expert who's generated over $200 million in sales. I promise by tuning in twice a week, you will get a much needed refreshing dose of truth, clarity, and cash making advice. Now let's get to it. What up, my people, my posse, my fellow crazies? I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, and we are going to end this work burnout cycle. I am determined and I've made it my mission with this podcast and my business coaching brand to teach you how to make massive amounts of money, whatever massive means to you, you know, life changing cash, doing what you love and with ease and with joy, with prioritizing your mental and physical wellness. Because without that, none of it matters. These are my no BS secrets to making more money while working less. And no, this isn't some gimmicky type of thing where I'm telling you in 30 days, you're going to all of a sudden make six figures. This is truly how to have freedom. I've been rich. I've also been a broke ass. But I've been rich. But what I wasn't is I wasn't wealthy. And the difference is when you're wealthy, you have true wealth, you have wealth of freedom in your life, you have fulfillment, you have breathing space, you have serenity, you have time to do things and have experiences and enjoy the riches and the money that you've brought in. Rich is almost like white knuckling the money it's really rooted in fear. And it comes from a deeply ingrained belief that's been passed down for generations. So this episode has come from a listener who requested it, Lillian. And Lillian DM'd me on Instagram. So you can DM me on Instagram. It's me who answers all of them. It's not someone on my team. DM me on Instagram with a podcast topic, or if there is a reoccurring thought or crappy belief that you have that you want me to address, or if it's something more tangible and strategic with your business or making money online, leave it. And you will usually end up getting some form of a personal episode because I do this show for you. For the podcast topic, Lillian writes, I'd like to hear your advice on how to understand when to stop working and rest. Take vacation so no one gets into burnout. I've experienced it. Usually I work too I work too much and then put pressure on myself and at a certain point get exhausted, but this somehow goes unnoticed. I understand I need a rest only when I'm completely out of energy my, and my desire to work and then I get ill. Maybe you can suggest some ways to better understand when is the right time to make a pause and recharge my batteries without getting into that desperate stage. Thank you. I appreciate I appreciate your honesty and being willing to be vulnerable and reaching out to me as a safe space. Well, there's really no one better than to answer this question and to help guide you than me because I built really my success of my entire life, if you call it success, and I'm not trying to put myself down, but my financial success of my entire life was rooted in the belief that more is better. I have to work so hard in order to be successful. The only way you get to the top is you got to fight your way to the top. Do you guys remember those terrible posters They were like cheap framed posters that were sold at like places like Franklin Covey, office supply stores, like the more expensive office supply stores, which I don't think they're around anymore. But and they would they'd be like someone like in a 
canoe or maybe it wasn't a canoe but it would be some kind of a boat and they're row they're rowing and it'd be like the o- only way to success is to have strong teamwork and then there'd be like another one of someone climbing a ladder and if you want to climb to the top you've got to do something along the lines of You've got to sacrifice something. You've got to work harder than the others. Show up earlier. Do more. Be more. And our parents got this information. And likely our parents' parents got this information. And a lot of this propaganda came from corporations wanting to, I guess you could say, motivate and retain employees. And there is some shift going on in corporate culture now, but those of you listening who are in the corporate world, but there's some, but it's very, very slow. Why? Because it suits them. It absolutely, it absolutely suits them. In when I started in like the news business, I mean, I, and I couldn't hang, man. There were people who would stay at the station 14 hours a day because they used to, then you get rewarded for it. You get rewarded for staying longer, doing more. Then I got into the pharmaceutical corporate world and whoever volunteered to do the medical conferences on the weekends, to do the entertaining at night, whoever volunteered the most, now you're the star and you got the accolades and you got all the things. And so I did all those things because I wanted the success. I wanted the cash because I thought that if I had the promotion, if I had the cash, or if we look at like how I built my first business, I wanted the freedom. I wanted to be able to get to a certain point to maybe sell that company or maybe with Project Me, the podcast, right? I get to a certain number of downloads and I'll get fancy sponsors, or maybe people will finally hear me, or I'll be able to help more people. And all these things dance in our minds with our ego, ego thoughts swirling around our inner critic, you know, swirling around. And of course, our higher self swirling around all at once, which I don't know about you. But sometimes I feel schizophrenic. And I'm not saying that, that condition putting it down. I really am like, there's different voices in our heads. It's really, it's insane. We need to stop the voices. And those voices in your, maybe it's one voice, maybe it's a couple, if you're like me, those voices in your head that are telling you, you've got to do more. You're not doing enough. You're behind. Look at everyone's ahead of you. You better do this. If you don't do this, you're not going to get this. Oh my God, it's almost the end of the year. And what the hell have you done? And you wasted your whole summer and you're nowhere near your goal and you better get at it. And and then you're like, but I'm, God, that sounds so stressful. And I don't know if I have it in me. And oh my God, it sounds so hard. And I don't want to. And then you're in resistance because this inner critic, this negative committee in your brain is so intense. Of course, the other side of you is, oh my God, that doesn't sound fun, right? So you're in resistance. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. It sounds like so much. Then you do your resistance behaviors. Maybe it's procrastinating for you. It's dissociating by binge watching TV. You scroll, you do whatever because you don't, you want, you don't want to do that because it sounds terrible. Of course, it sounds terrible because it's this built up thing that you're not enough. You need to do more to get more. You need to trade your time with your kids, your family, your luxuriating time in order to get this. You need to trade your peace of mind. You might be tired. Well, you need to trade your rest. You don't get to rest. If we don't deal with the root of these beliefs that our actions stem from, even our subconscious actions, and they're conscious for some of you, obviously for our fellow listener, they were conscious because she knows it's a problem. Lillian knew it's a problem enough where she wants to stop the cycle and she wrote in. I did not know it was a problem until it literally almost killed me. I really didn't know. So it's a blessing. Those of you who realize it's a problem or maybe you're awakening to it's a problem by listening to the show and listening to me. But if you are not feeling 
and I'm not going to say all the time because that'd be bullshit. If you're not feeling like you have enough time, you time, rest time, fun time, play time, luxuriating time, and your schedule is just filled with constantly going and tasking and doing and adulting, and you basically almost like collapse at night. This is not what we're going for. This is not wealth. And it won't matter how much money you have in the bank. And here's why. Because I chased that money because I thought, okay, once I have this money, then I can rest. Then I can kind of exhale. Then I can. We, we, all, we all do this stuff. And I really believed it. I believed it. And then because I believed it, I would, you know, I would see reaffirming evidence of that belief everywhere and other people and strangers, wherever. I'd be like, see, you know, I'd see someone driving around in their convertible when I was in my corporate job. And I always wanted, I dreamed of having like a luxury convertible. Of course, it's the LA life, right? Like that to me meant freedom, my hair blowing in the wind, I've made it, I get to have the car I want. And I'd company cars in pharma, which I'm very grateful for, but they're not hot, okay? And, but you do have a trunk filled with drugs, which is interesting. So that vision, and I would see other people in a convertible, I would see people doing that. And I'd be like, see, they've got it. I'd make up a story about them. I had no fucking idea. I'd be like, see, they got that. Or when I would go to the gym and there would be all the, I call them like the the housewives of Calabasas or whatever. I would see them, you know, they would go do a class. And then after they'd have all this time to chat, they'd sit in the steam room. Maybe they'd go grab coffees together. And I was like, I was I was nasty. I was like, oh, I must have a rich husband. Some of them straight up do. And good for them. But some of them straight up do. But I just collectively I had I was throwing shade because I wanted that. So I want you to one notice where you're throwing shade. You might not do it outwardly because it's kind of nasty and you might even shame yourself for being like that cuz no one want we don't want to be like that. You might do it when you're scrolling Instagram, right? You might do it when you look up stuff on Facebook. I just I got to take I got to take a news break here. <laughs> I'm really trying to break myself from saying the word right and I'm I know I'm bringing it to your attention. So then now you guys are going to notice, but I'm trying to break myself of it cuz when I listen to other podcasters and they use the word start too much, I start cringing and I do it. I know it might be annoying. Just now I'm working on it. <laughs> now that I'm, we're, work, we're working on it. We're working on it. Me and my other personalities. While, while I'm in this news break, legit, this is your last chance to apply for my Project Me Six Month Mastermind experience. I'm going away next week. Actually, I'm going away the end of this week. I'm going away for my birthday. My birthday is September 5th. I was born on Labor Day, which is what also inspired this episode because it is no coincidence. It's almost like a God joke that my mom worked and was in like some kind of crazy labor, like third. Well, who knows if it's true? She's a narcissist, but we'll go with the story because it's dramatic. 36 hours of labor and I'm born on labor day and think, and it was hard to find a doctor because it was labor day, yada, yada, yada. Well, I learned my workaholism and it's a true, it's a true addiction. It, it really is. And it's just one that people highly reward you for, but it will slowly kill you and rob you of your joy and cause so much discontent and restlessness and anxiety and depression and misery in your life, just like every other kind of addiction. And it robs you of connection with people, intimacy, all sorts of things. But I learned all of this from my mom. So my mom worked on Labor Day, which is totally appropriate for her. I watched my mom, who's an entrepreneur, 
which is why I didn't want to be one, literally work seven days a week my entire life. This woman would be working seven days a week right now. She is in a sense, I'm sure, by doing tons of like nonstop busyness and tasking seven days a week. So she had me on Labor Day. And then I'm here. I'm born on Labor Day. So I had to work, right? It's work coming out of the badge. <laughs> I had to work. I had to work. And that's a lot. Think about it. Poor kid. That baby, that's a lot of work coming in from a, from in vitro into the world. So I was born working on a day that's dedicated in the United States. Which of course, it's de- of course there's a day for it in the United States because this whole work hustle nonstop culture was bred in the U.S. <laughs> it just blows my mind. So that's where. That's where all of this started. But I just want those of you who were especially raised, and this doesn't just extend just to the US. I I see it in most all of my Canadian clients as well. I see it a lot with my Eastern Europeans. It's like there's stoicism, if that's a word, there's a nobility to sacrifice, to working hard, to strife, to hardship, have some Israeli clients. That's definitely multi-generational. So this extends, but you have to laugh at the fact that there's we get one day, Labor Day, so we get one fucking day a year where we're it's dedicated, where we're not supposed to work. Now even Christmas and even Thanksgiving has turned into work because, and we turn it into that because we're in control of this. But we've turned it in, into that. Now it's fucking Black Friday. Black Friday now starts like even the day before Thanksgiving. So now we're working because we're going, oh, we got to make sure we check that deal and get that deal and find out this Christmas present. And then those of you who are like entertainers and love to cook or somehow got the job in your family and you don't want the job anymore, maybe you used to and now you don't. Now you're all irritated because you're stuffing a turkey and making doing all of this stuff and cleaning your house. And now the holidays are robbed of rest, relaxation, rejuvenation, luxuriating. And even Christmas now stores are open on fucking Christmas here. It's it's just nonstop. It's it's just getting worse and worse and worse. But we can take it back. And it's hard to see it when we're in it. I love this analogy of you can't see the entire picture when you're standing in t- inside of the frame. You just can't, which is why we can't work through this stuff on our own, which is why there are people like me. There's coaches like me that are here speaking to you right on the podcast, working with you privately, working in the mastermind. So that's where I was going with it. I'm leaving this week and this really is your last chance to apply for my Project Me six month mastermind because there, we start on September 14th. And there's literally only going to be a handful of time slots where I can do the application calls to make absolutely certain that this is the best fit for you right now, the best use of your time, energy, and money, because I only want people in there where I feel confident you're going to get results. Otherwise, it's not a good look on me, and that wouldn't be good for you. So if you're sitting there and you've heard me talk about this and you're like, God, you know, I would love to be in that collective and really learn and take my business seriously and not just learn information, but implement, actually do the fucking stuff. You've done enough learning, observing, watching, Googling, buying this, that, or the other. We're actually doing the damn thing. And you've probably leaned in and wanted to, but that negative committee in your brain, the self-doubt has gone, well, maybe I'm not far enough along yet. I need to get this, this, and this done first before I could work with someone like Tiffany, or I don't know if I'm far enough along and I don't want to be embarrassed with the other people in the mastermind, da, 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 da. If you're leaning in and you know that you figuring it out, you trying different things has been your plan and you don't have a solid action plan and what you're doing may have worked somewhat, but it's not scalable. You're going to start burning out 
And we need to create multiple revenue streams for your business so that you're making money while you're busy doing other things. We're kind of like cloning yourself in a sense. And how to do that without being some tech specialist or having some complex funnel, anything like that. That's what we're doing. Plus, we're having a lot of fun doing it. Because if you're not having fun, then what's the freaking point? So if that is something that you would like, but you're having stories in your head, I would tell you to apply and trust that I will determine if this is a great fit for you right now. And if it's not, I'll be honest with love. What I don't want you to do is apply if you're really not serious about treating your business like a business and you're still treating it like a jobby, a time sucking expensive hobby that you're just kind of toe dipping in. You need to go, okay, do I, how do I want to round out 2022, 2023? I have timed this mastermind to be in the peak online money making season for any industry, period, end of story. Well, I shouldn't say any, there's always some exceptions. And that's September through February. So it's designed so you can take advantage of this time. This is this industry is growing faster almost than any other industry aside from weed. <laughs> and I want to make sure that you're getting all you need is a micro, a micro micro slice of the pie would make you a million dollars a year. So I I'm not I I just want I don't want you to be in your own way about this. And there's one easy way to do it, and that's apply. So you can get more of the details if you're a detail person at projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash mastermind. You can also swipe up. The link is right there inside the show notes. And we start on September 14th. This also includes a two-day live mastermind experience with me, a luxury experience. So this is the only way, unless you're coming to see me you know, speak at an event, but you're literally getting me and my team plus the other incredible mastermind members in a luxury environment for two days on top of working every single month together as a collective and having that support. So you're not going to get this anywhere else. And you're certainly never going to get anything like this at this price. This is unheard of in the industry at this price. But what I believe is, I believe in being fair and reasonable with my pricing. And you don't need to price gouge just because you have all this experience, just because you have the receipts, just because you have millions in the bank. You don't need to price gouge people in order to serve and make a lot of money. It just needs to be fair and reasonable. Plus, we also have pricing plans available because I'm well aware If you were sitting on millions of dollars, you would be hiring me privately. You probably wouldn't be in the mastermind, right? You're coming to the mastermind. Yeah, you have money, but you're not making what you want to make or you feel like everything you're making is going out, right? (laughs) So I'm well aware of that. We've got you covered. So swipe up. The application is in the show notes. So let's move on to really uprooting these beliefs. The reality is this, we got to look at, we got to look at facts and situations. When I'll never forget when I went on a business trip to Aven, France, all over this area of the South of France. And you may have heard of the product line Aven, Um, some people pronounce it a vein. It's the number one over the counter skincare beauty line in all of France, probably in many other countries. And so I was there on a business trip. They housed me at their wellness center, blah, 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 at their headquarters. And this was the first time I was made aware that full time In France, if you're a full-time employee, it's 32 hours a week. Now, that may have changed over the last few years, but I doubt it. That's full-time. I was dying. I was with the CEO and the president doing the tour. And there's a coffee bar, like a Starbucks-style coffee bar inside this building. People were outside in the sun lunching. I even saw people having wine 
I did not see anyone fucking working. And I started laughing. I'm like, what is going on? And the president and CEO were like, this always happens when we have people, we have executives in or con- consultants in from the US. They always say the same, they're always saying the same thing. And I go, well, inform me. And it's basically they're saying burned out employees don't yield quality work. So it's better to have people have a high quality of life and the work ends up improving versus strangling them for it. And then everything they give you is like lackluster or phoning it in. And then he also made another good point. We have a company that promotes wellness and well-being and healing, but we would work our people to death. And I was like, oh, my God, isn't that wild? And it made me realize how much more energy would you have? How much more productive, creative, focused? I see this trend of and has ADHD. We all statistically, it's not possible for all these people to have ADHD. Okay, it's just not. And my doctors who listen would agree. It's just not. But I'm not taking away from the fact that you don't feel like you have those symptoms. You have those symptoms and you have that anxiousness and that can't focus that all of that because of not taking enough time to pause and rest, relax and reflect. So I need you to start training your brain on I'm actually more productive when I rest. And you have to trust that. And your brain is going to fight you on that because it's been fed these beliefs that feel like facts for years. In fact, your nervous system might go into fight or flight. Like I'm going to get fired. I'm going to not, I'm not going to get clients. I'm going to go broke. That's what mine does. I'm going to go broke. I'm going to end up in a tent. If I'm going to lose everything that I've built, if I take too much time, it's not true. The more time we rest and play and enjoy, the more money we make. Now, I need to say this for my fellow workaholics, overworkers, overgivers, because it's you're like, oh, so I can just sit on the couch and be in a lounge chair and do nothing all day? No, that's not what I'm saying. Maybe you need to do that for a, a full day or two. But you're not wired to not be productive. If you're someone who's always doing and struggling with this, you're not wired to sit on your ass for weeks on end and let it overcome you. I know it might feel that way. That's a tricky way your brain's trying to manipulate you. I really need you to build in this brain rest time, physical rest time every single day. Are there going to be some days that get away from you? Of course, especially if you're an entrepreneur. And then especially if you're a mompreneur, but build it in. I have brain rest times. So it can be 15 minutes. It can be 30 minutes. Sometimes I need an entire day where I don't have to, I'm not allowed to think about anything with work. Go buy like a, a magazine that has nothing, go buy a book that has nothing to do with personal development, that has nothing to do with business, that has nothing to do with healing go to a craft star- store and buy one of those craft kits that your inner child finds delightful. You can do it with your kids. If you don't have kids like me, you do it by yourself. I love building Legos. Fun fact, I also make magnets. I love making magnets. I know some of you really enjoy coloring. I would prefer for this to not involve anything digital the digital coloring and stuff like that, I would rather it be your, is it analog? I don't know if that's the right term, but take it offline. Go try something new. Go buy like a little mini embroidery kit. See if you like embroidery. If you don't, then you can stop it. Maybe go buy a kid's activity book, a sticker book. Go try some things that are new to you. I would commit to you need to do something once a day that delights you. And it can be really small. It can be trying a new coffee shop. It could be trying a new coffee drink at your shop. It could be working from maybe a hotel lobby instead of working from your home office. It could be walking around a craft store or just 
looking at all the colors and the stickers and all of, all of the things. Okay, this is probably why I love TJ Maxx. It could be doing something like that. I also want you to take a brain break. Here, If you don't do this stuff, back to what our listener wrote in, it's like with water and dehydration. If you wait till you are thirsty, it's too late. And thirsty cues us to drink. So we've got to do other cues to get ourselves to drink before we're thirsty. Otherwise, we're not ahead of the dehydration. We're trying to play catch up, which is how I know you guys feel in your life. I know that feeling. I've felt that this last few weeks since I've had COVID. I feel like I'm two beats behind and the world is moving fast. Time is moving fast. We're already going. We're already entering the final months of the year. There's already Christmas shit in the stores. It makes me panicky. It makes me edgy. It makes me restless. It makes me discontent. It robs me of my joy, my serenity. My luxuriating time is robbed because I'm trying to calm my brain down. So now I'm trying to play catch up to it instead of me being ahead of it. So get ahead of the dehydration. What are some things you can do? It's what I'm telling you. Do one thing a day that delights you. It could be maybe taking your dog on a walk and that's not something that's not something you do every day. But try different things and experiment and if it doesn't do it for you that's okay, but at least try something different. I want you to have a brain break at least 15 minutes a day where you stare at a damn corner of a wall. You are not and you're not allowed to think about work. This isn't meditation. You can go during this time and do my Summer Abundance Guided Meditation Walk. I'm giving that to you guys for free for a limited time. That link is also in the show notes. I'm pretty sure it's projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash Summer Abundance. You can swipe up if you've not gotten that. And walk around, notice how green things are, notice the flowers, notice the trees, notice how the air smells, notice how your feet feel on the ground, make yourself a cup of tea and focus on how the tea tastes, how it looks, light a candle, make a little ritual of it, even if it's just 15 minutes. And for the love of God, I do not want you working seven days a week. And it's very easy to fall into that, especially when you have a business or you're side hustling and you're not fully in your business. You, I need you to change things up and it needs to be, I don't even love five, but if you're at seven now, go to five. I'm at four. And does that mean I don't post stuff and do some things on the other days? I do, but I delight in it. So I delight in it. All the stuff that feels kind of heavy, that expels a lot of energy for me, obviously coaching, doing my group programs, heavy content writing, planning shit, all that stuff. I bring that to only four days a week. So then there's three that I can do. Yeah, I can do business activities if I want, but they have to delight me. And then the rest of it is filled with fun, luxuriating joy, rest, a brain break. Otherwise, this cycle won't stop. And you have the power to control this cycle. But your your programming in your brain, that negative committee, that fear, the fear receptors are going to try to get you for the life of them. It's going to try to get you to stop and tell you danger, danger, danger. You can't do this. You don't have time to do this. You're already so behind. You already procrastinated on this. So you can't now go take a brain break because you've already procrastinated. Well, now you're punishing yourself. And where do you think that's going to get you? It's a punishing self-abuse behavior. Would you want a boss working your kid the way you work yourself. And I don't just mean in work money tasks, adulting life tasks too, like errands and shit like that. Would you want your kid working for a company that made them work as often relentlessly as how you're working yourself? You're being a, a nasty, evil boss to yourself. 
why not see what happens when you're an incredible boss? Why not experiment with that? And it might just have to be one hour at a time. It might have to be one day at a time. But what would an incredible boss do? Maybe some of you have had the blessing to have a great boss. I've had, mm, I wanted to say two, but I've really had one great boss. Shout out Jill. One great boss. Others were great in certain ways, but she was great all around. You know what? I think I got a promotion working under her. I didn't feel as stressed. So I was more relaxed in my interaction. So my sales numbers were better because I wasn't coming from this kind of desperate force chasing energy. So ask yourself, what would an incredible boss do? What would they do? What kind of things would they say? What kind of deadlines would they set? Would there be deadlines? Would they stack your plate with so much shit that you're not going to be able to enjoy your weekend at all? Would they stack you with so much stuff you feel like a pressure cooker that's about to explode and you're having to drink wine in order to take the pressure off to be able to sleep at night? No. So reconfigure some things. You have the power and the control to do that today and you'll see what happens. The more ease we have, the more fun we have, the more we can do things in an easy and relaxed manner, the more money you will make. And I'm pure evidence of it. You'll make more. And even more importantly, you'll be in the wealth mode. You'll be in the abundance mode. You'll be able to enjoy your successes. You'll be able to enjoy that money instead of being a hostage or a prisoner of it. And I've lived both ways. You don't want the other way, which is why in all of my programs, we only focus on the easy and relaxed manner way. That's it. We don't do hustle. We don't do hard. We don't do any of that stuff. It's not necessary. It ends up backfiring, causes misery, anxiety, depression, And that's not what we're here for. We don't need to do that. And we can't help as many people as we want to help and serve at our greatest good out of that energy. Remember, go apply to the mastermind by swiping up and then download the summer abundance guided meditation walking series by swiping up. Those are only like, I think they're 10 minutes or less each. And then I have a bonus fourth audio in there that is addressing when the self doubt thought of, I don't know if I can really do this. I don't know if I'm cut out to do this. I don't know if I'm qualified enough to do this, all that crap that's in there too, as a bonus. And that link is in the show notes as well. Wishing you great health, wealth and worth as always. Love you guys. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.